Hey, all, Michael Lunsford here, Citizens for a New Louisiana. And look, <laughs> the Lafayette City Council, for all intents and purposes, is a lawless organization. Um, they, they pass rules for you, so the law that they create for you, you have to follow or else. The rules that they have for themselves, well, not so much. You know, we saw with the Home Rule Charter that this council, uh, or members of the current council, voted to violate the Home Rule Charter by amending it with an ordinance. It went all the way to the Louisiana Supreme Court, and they actually didn't even answer the question. They just said, uh, we're going to allow it to happen because, you know, um, the worst case scenario, eh, it's not so bad. And so that's effectively what happened back then. Then you have this city council created a job for a city attorney, not a city parish attorney, in violation of the Home Rule Charter yet again. Now, this time, Josh Guillory was mayor president. He had an opportunity to step up and say, hey, y'all are violating the charter. And they said, so sue us. And he did, sort of. And uh, the, the lady that they hired backed out and said, look, this is too much trouble for me. I'm out. So another example of the rules of order that was passed by this city council uh, back in January, in fact, the 19th of, of 2021. Uh, the previous iteration of this allowed you to speak for five minutes at the city council meeting. This one, they reduced your talk time to three minutes because obviously they don't want to hear from the citizens because five minutes is way too long. I'm surprised they didn't just cut you to 30 seconds, but be that as it may, the rules of order also contain another little gem we talked about last time. In fact, I'm going to let Assistant City Parish Attorney Paul Escott explain it himself. Take a listen. Yes, the, the rules uh, clearly state that all proclamations, monthly recognitions, ceremonial presentations shall be issued only from the mayor president's office. And so, you know, it, it, it doesn't take a lawyer, I suppose, to conclude that a proclamation on the agenda um, by anyone other than the mayor president's office uh, is, uh, does not follow the rule. Now, of course, we're talking about the city council making a proclamation in violation of the rule, which, you know, he just read to you. So what's going to happen here? In fact, it, it, you know, let's, let's even get a little bit deeper into this because Mr. Ascot had a solution to solve the problem that the city council wanted to solve while following the rules. Perhaps the, the solution to follow the rules and actually elevate the importance of the instrument would be to redo it as a resolution and have it on the agenda and vote on it as the Lafayette City Council. That would not only follow the rules, but also uh, accomplish the same objective. So there you have it. The council has a problem. Mr. Escott points out, using the rules, here's the solution to solve the problem. And what happens next just, it boggles my mind. It ought to boggle yours, too. Listen to Pat Lewis explaining that they don't have to follow the rules. This is the council meeting. It's no one else meeting. We're in a council meet, a council room right now. This is the council auditorium. It's for no one else but the council. So we should have the authority to do whatever we want. The council members. So we do happen to have an attorney on the city council. I don't mean on staff. I mean on the city council. District 5 is Glenn Lazard, who is an attorney. In fact, I have here in my hand the Home Rule Charter. I would have expected uh, for an attorney to have read at least through page 58, which um, starts the section about all the council districts and all the boundaries. Before that, it's just generally the rules of how the government's supposed to operate, who's in charge of what, etc. cetera. Uh, it also mentions in here um, the rules of order, uh, which we've already talked about. But I would expect him to read the Home Rule Charter and the Rules of Order, which is, what is this, maybe 10 pages. But he had a question. Why are we using an ordinance, or why are we not using an ordinance? Why are we using a resolution, which is not binding, uh, according to him? And so, and I want to remind you, if you're not familiar with the difference, a resolution is generally done to raise taxes. It's also done to put things on the ballot. You don't do an ordinance to do that. An ordinance is like smoking, and you got to be so many feet from the door and all of that. Uh, they also adjust the budget by ordinance. But anyway, th the question was, why do we use a resolution instead of an ordinance? And Mr. Escott comes through yet again. Check it out. And the reason you do your rules in the form of a resolution is because the charter specifically says that you shall do that by resolution. Now, moving from here, he wants to ask Madam Clerk Veronica Williams, hey, have we ever violated these rules before? 
Uh, have we done any of those prior to tonight since we passed that resolution? Hmm. Um, yes, sir. Um, you had requested that we look to see, and just in 2021 alone, we had about seven, seven ceremonial presentations and recognitions. And, and, and you did not object to any of those? They, they were in clear violation of the rules, right? Sure. Well, if we haven't followed them up to now. I guess so. I guess so. so. Why do we have them? No, you see where this is going. They, they obviously, they violated the rules seven times plus one. That's eight times in six months. This is June 16th, I believe is the meeting date. And nobody cares. In fact, when, when asked, hey, are we just going to break the rules again? Yeah, why not? Who cares? Now, if they were to pass a rule and say, you can't have whatever, you, you can't smoke in front of a building, you call, they can write you a ticket, you have to pay a fine, you have to go to court, all this trouble. If they get caught, what happens? Nobody cares. In fact, I'm going to add to this, and I'm going to show you how they violate other rules. In fact, what, there, there's a the United States Constitution says you can't discriminate against people based on race. Well, the city council did that previously in the Bayou Vermillion District board appointment. They said it had to be a specific race. The, it, they limited the criteria to get in. The qualification was you had to be a specific race to get in. Now, we have saw... Not too long ago, the federal government stepped in and told Lafayette they had to change that rule when it comes to all of their boards and commissions, specifically, in this case, was the airport. But the question came up, what happens if we just do what we want? Check this one out. Uh, Paul, I have a question. So let's say we proceed with a vote tonight. What, what, are the, you know, what are the repercussions of us doing that tonight? is potentially this appointment is potentially subject to a challenge which if successfully brought forward would likely require you to redo it okay so at, at, at worst case scenario we would just have to revote again if if challenged that would be off the top of my head the answer yes okay all right thank you isn't it funny she didn't ask hey mr rescott what's the right thing to do here no no her question was, hey, what happens if we get caught? What's the worst case scenario? Are we going to jail? Oh, no, we just have to revote. Oh, well, yeah, let's just do it anyway then. Let's just go ahead and do it. What happens if we get caught violating our own rules? Nothing. We just violated our rules. That means no one can trust us. Yeah, they don't trust us anyway. We'll just do it anyway. So that's, that's the mindset. In fact, these are the same people who created the Save the City from Josh Guillory Committee. You ever wonder if, if maybe they should have created the Save the City? from the city council committee? Hmm.